What is going on everybody? Today we're back with another video and I just wanna start off by saying thank you so much for everybody that has made this channel what it is. We are over 430 subscribers. You guys are absolutely awesome. So much love from me. And uh, you guys keep doing what you're doing. Keep hitting that like button. Keep subscribing. And we're gonna get into today's video. So for Christmas time, um, I asked for a new tank and this isn't a big tank this is you know just on the real small end um and it's a five gallon tank and i got to thinking about it and i want to do a little bit of an experiment with it because i see people use these tanks for freshwater setups i want to see if the light not if it'll grow but how well it'll grow plants so the tank i'm talking about is the fluval five gallon evo tank and the light on it is rated for 11,000 calvin i know it's probably upside down on the camera but this tank is made for salt water so it's like a mini sump in the back it's got a pump and stuff um but i want to i want to try it out and see how well a light that is rated to grow coral grows plants so this is going to be like a two-part video uh, the first video, obviously, this is this one you guys are watching. Um, it's going to be me setting the tank up, and uh, we'll get it filled up today. And uh, part two will be probably like, I'll probably put part two out a month from now. It's probably like the beginning of February. I'll put uh, part two out, and we'll check the progress of the plants. And I'll do like, you know, little uh, updates on the tank, you know, for the next video. You know, I'll film little bits at a time, little time lapses or something like that and uh we'll do something cool like that so if you guys watched the tank i set up for my sister on christmas um i did her a one and a half gallon beta tank and if you guys remember i use fluorite by ccam fluorite if you remember is a inert substrate and there's a hole in the bag um if you guys remember fluorite is a inert substrate so it does not buffer the ph so when it comes down to this, I don't know what I'm going to stock it with, but right now it's just going to be the plants. And, um, so if we do want to buffer the pH, depending on, you know, what it's sitting at already, we can always throw some crushed coral in the back of the sump and that will regulate the pH. So I also got some of the black sand that we used on that tank. And, uh, we're basically just using some leftover supplies and we're going to make this thing work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the camera up. I'm going to turn it around. Um, once I get the tank all cleaned, um, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to clean it, uh, more or less sterilize it, and then we'll set it up. We'll get it filled up and uh, we'll go from there, guys. So the tank is going to go underneath the 10 gallon and uh, we'll pull this out of here. And like I said, the um, let me get it back in the frame here. So it's got the, the mini sump in the back and then we got a nice lid for the top. And then this is the light on the top and it goes the whole length of the tank. So with the tank, they gave us some bio media and some activated carbon and of course the pump. Okay, so when you buy this tank, it's gonna come with a bag of bio media. It's gonna come with a small bag of activated carbon. It's gonna come with the pump and the hose and the fitting for the end of it. That's gonna pump our water back in. And then this is the filtration. And this is gonna house, you got slots to put your bag of biomedia and your bag of activated carbon. So when it comes down to it, the water is gonna flow through. Get that back in there. The water's gonna flow through here. It's gonna go through the sponge, through the biomedia, through the carbon. Um, at the moment, I don't know if I'm gonna run the carbon, and then it's gonna overflow into this side and it's gonna get pumped back out into the tank. And for a five gallon tank, this thing is sleek. It's not very wide as far as depth, but it is a little bit taller and it is nice and long because you do have the sump over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna clean this. And uh, we're gonna do it in a very efficient way. And uh, let me set the tripod up guys. 
All right, so when it comes to cleaning and sterilizing, um, we're gonna use just plain white vinegar, distilled, and this is from Walmart. Um, you can get it pretty much at any grocery store. And then I have a small pitcher of just regular water here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the filter sponge. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this out of here. We're gonna get the pump out. And that's all the pump is, guys. It's very small, very small. Um, let me see if it says what it's rated for. This pump max output is 83 gallons per hour. So um, that's max output and there is adjustable flow on it. You can adjust the flow on this pump, which I find very nice, especially if you have, um, you know, if you don't want it moving fast. For me, for this, we're gonna, we're gonna have it all the way opened up. That way it pushes the water as hard as it can across the tank and creates more flow across the plants. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar to our water. And you don't need much, guys. This isn't even a full gallon of water. And we're just gonna add a little bit of vinegar in, okay? And then, I have a little sponge thing here. And um, you can actually, you know, you can get these at the dollar store and stuff like that. You can use them for scraping algae, cleaning the inside of the glass of the tank. If you don't want to go buy like a flipper or something like that, or an actual algae scraper, you can use stuff like this. You can get them at the dollar store for very cheap, which I find uh, very helpful in cleaning tanks. Um, I have this one and then I have a brush. So I'm just gonna take this and I mixed up the vinegar water. So I'm gonna take this, I'll slide this out of the way. And because this is a sponge, it's now full of vinegar water. And I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna clean around. And of course, after you clean with the vinegar water, you're gonna to want to go through, you're gonna to wanna to dump this out and then you're gonna to wanna to rinse it out with just regular water. Um, it doesn't have to be dechlorinated. You can just rinse it out with regular water and um, I like to do it, you guys don't have to, but for a sump like this, we're gonna just go ahead, and I know you guys can't see it right now, but I'm just gonna dip the pump in the vinegar water, and then I will put it in some regular water and turn it on and just let it pump clean water through itself. And uh, we'll do that like that. And uh, I'm gonna dump this out, guys, and I'm gonna rinse it out real quick, and then we'll get to probably putting the substrate in I'm gonna wash that so uh, I'll be back up with you guys in a second all right guys so we got the fluoride dark in and I think I might just leave it at that I don't think I'm gonna put the other sand on top of it I want to say I'm just gonna leave it like that if I need more substrate to bury the roots in I can always add the black sand on top and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this filled up and uh, we're gonna get it hooked up so you guys can see it all together so as you guys know, um, before you fill the tank, it's always easier just to plant the plants. So I went ahead and I brought home um, one red crypt, one green crypt, one bronze crypt, and then two crypt spiralis. And uh, these are what we're gonna use for our experiment. We may add you know, a few more plants here, here or there, but uh, as of right now, we're just gonna space these out and uh, then we'll get to filling the tank, guys. and the green in the front and then the two spiralis in the back that way the taller ones are the spiralis that give more depth feel to it and uh we're not going to run any fertilizers on this tank the only thing in here fertilizer wise is going to be the substrate other than that we want to see how well this light's going to do so let's turn it on all right 
So on camera, it looks pretty blue, but it looks nice and pretty much white in, in, in person. All right, now the camera's set up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug the pump. All right, and there it goes. So you guys can see the air bubbles moving and we're just gonna adjust this. Actually, you know what? We're gonna leave it like right where it's at. That way it points um, optimal um, airflow over the plants. Let me grab my tweezers here. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now it's blowing across. And I know it looks blue to you guys. I'm sorry for that. It's more white in person. It is a little bit cloudy. So once it um, clears up, it'll look a lot better. But of course, like I said, we're gonna do a, probably a month long um, watch, watch on this tank. And we're gonna see how well these grow, how well this light grows them, and how well this looks. So we'll come back to this once the water is a little bit. Okay guys, so we are back. It is day three, forgive me. I did not film day two because I was just so busy with New Year's Eve and work and da 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 da. So day three, here we are, the tank is cleared up and I actually got a request from one of my subscribers, uh, Katie. So this part's for you. And she commented and asked if I would do a guppy video. So I thought, what am I gonna stock this Evo tank with? And what better to do it with than my guppies? So These are actually red lace double sword guppies and these are a breeding group i got these guys over at oca from a buddy of mine and uh they've already reproduced for me uh, they are a beautiful guppy so i have them let me turn the camera around i have them in a container here and these guys are very beautiful i believe one of the females is actually still holding um forgive me for not owning a catch cup but i need to just buy one offline i really do um but these are what we're gonna stock the Evo tank with. And these guys are absolutely beautiful. Like I said, this is a breeding group. There's two males to three females in there. And they get along perfect. They breed, they reproduce. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set the camera up and we're gonna get these guys into the tank. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit these guys out of the container and I'm just gonna drop them into the tank. So as you can see, for day three, your plants are looking great. No algae blooms, nothing like that. So something I want to talk about when it comes down to this, this tank is not cycled. Um, there's no bacteria in here unless there was any that were living on the plants. So um, there was the spot in the back of the sump on the filter pad for the um, biomedia. So I went ahead and I rinsed that and then I tossed it in here and this tank just had decor water in it. So something I want to put in here and I use this to do everything I do between here and at work is Fritz Turbo Start 700. So with this, you know, people always, you know, they take the tank and they start it and it takes them, you know, give or take, you know, between three weeks to six weeks to a month, you know, two months to cycle a tank. Not with this. You just add this in, this is your beneficial bacteria, and this takes ammonia to get it going. So, when you put this in, you need a source of ammonia, therefore the fish. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this. This bottle treats, I wanna say somewhere, I wanna say it's somewhere around 50, uh, Per 50 gallons. Yes, yeah, so this this is a one ounce bottle and it treats 50 gallons. And you guys can find this on our website, flipaquatics.com. And uh, this stuff is awesome. 
we use it at the shop, I use it here at home. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour some of this in, you guys can see it. I'm gonna shake it up real quick. All right, here we go. And that's about all we will need for this tank. So gave it a couple hours, had to go do a couple things, and we are back to the tank now. The guppies are all in here, they're doing well, swimming around. Looking beautiful, look at that male. Look how beautiful he is. So for the, my guppies, how I keep them, um, I keep a pH of around 7.2, um, anywhere between 7.2 and 7.8. Uh, you can go as low as 6.8 on your uh, pH, but keep in mind you go that low, uh, you start getting acidic. So typically I like anything neutral or a little bit above neutral uh, when it comes to these fish. And then as a temperature, I keep them between 72 and 74 degrees. Um, other than that, like I couldn't tell you what the water hardness is. Um, I couldn't tell you much else, but that's how I keep guppies. Excuse me. Um, they're doing fine in here. I'm curious to see if they're still going to breed in here. I'm sure they will. And, uh, if they do, I mean, I have a tank of babies right now that I can add the new babies to. Um, and of course feed them fry starter and stuff like that. And I'm sure these guys will keep reproducing to the point where I am overrun with guppies. <laughs> so, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up if you stuck around this long. Um, honestly, I mean, I don't know how else to close this. So um, we're gonna come back to this video in a month. Like I said, this is gonna be part one out of part two. And um, we'll come back here in a month. I'm gonna run this light for between four to six hours a day. Um, and I'm not gonna dose fertilizers. Like I said, the only thing nutrient-wise for these plants is the fluoride dark. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a great start to your new year and I will see you guys in the next one.